Hello, my name is Dominic Foley and I'm a Principal Scientist working at Waters. Welcome to this webinar on advancing research with the SARS-CoV-2 LCMS kit, research use only. This webinar will introduce you to an exciting new kit-based approach for directly detecting SARS-CoV-2 nuclear capsid peptides in clinical research studies. As part of this webinar, I want to provide a primer on SARS-CoV-2 and the role of PCR and the use of LCMSMS in its detection for clinical research. As part of this, I will discuss the evolution of LCMSMS in its use of directly detecting SARS-CoV-2 and how this led to the development of the SARS-CoV-2 LCMS kit, RUO. I will provide an overview of the kit and then the performance characteristics associated with the kit. From the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, led by Waters Innovation Response Team, we have supported our customers and collaborators in the development of vaccines, therapies and research to combat COVID-19. Since October 2020, the wider Waters team have played an active role in a coalition of academic, commercial and government research scientists in assisting in the development of LCMS methods for detecting SARS-CoV-2. In just 16 weeks, the coalition went from initiating development of a method in university laboratories to a translated LCMS workflow. I would like to give you an overview of the virus itself, the current state of play with detection by PCR, and how we can leverage LCMS as a technique to complement PCR as a method to detect SARS-CoV-2. Many will be familiar with some aspects of the SARS-CoV-2 virus now, particularly in regards to the spike protein. The spike protein is what is used to elicit an immune response in many of the vaccines. Mutations in the spike protein can contribute to immune escape from vaccinated individuals. The spike protein works by binding to the human angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2 receptor during the initial stage of infection. The nucleocapsid or NCAP protein is less well known but is no less important. It is involved in viral replication and transcription of the genome and is a large structural component of the viral particle constituting approximately 88% of the entire virus. The next largest component of the virus is the spike protein at 5%. This makes the NCAP protein an ideal target for mass detection using LCMS. So the question is why would LCMS be chosen as an alternative to established techniques for detecting SARS-CoV-2? Well, as indicated on the previous slide, SARS-CoV-2 is a protein-rich viral particle. LCMS is widely used in the field of proteomics to examine protein-rich compounds and using what is termed a bottom-up or surrogate peptide approach, an orthogonal quantitative readout of digested peptides is found to correspond to the protein of interest, i.e. digested peptides from NCAP can help quantify the amount of viral NCAP protein in a sample. As many research labs already have LCMS systems established in their labs, a method for detecting SARS-CoV-2 peptides can easily be migrated to those systems without the need for extensive training. LCMS also offers the capability of analysing multiple analytes from a single sample in one run, meaning that other viruses or biomarkers could potentially be detected within the same experiment providing greater insight into a sample during clinical research studies. LCMSMS is also less prone to the impact of contamination compared to RT-PCR based methods, where small amounts of contamination are amplified during PCR cycles. As I've mentioned PCR, I thought it would be worth giving a quick PCR primer for those less familiar with the technique. Discovered by Kerry Mullis in the 1980s, for which he won a Nobel Prize, polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, 
allows millions of copies of DNA to be generated from small amounts over a short period of time. In regards to SARS-CoV-2, the virus is lysed, the RNA is purified, and reverse transcription is performed to generate complementary DNA. Amplifi amplification and detection is then performed multiple times where the sequence is copied or extended to generate new strands of DNA. These are the PCR cycles, and the number of cycles it takes to hit the threshold is referred to the cycle threshold or CT value. Therefore, the higher the CT value, the lower the amount of original RNA present in the starting material. The key method attribute is that PCR relies on the amplification of the target analyte to reach the analytical sensitivity. We have made an attempt to estimate how a CT value correlates to SI units of protein and peptides for LCMS, which is quantified in moles. In this table, we have examples of estimates of how a CT value corresponds to viral load in RNA per microliter and how that translates to protein and peptide concentrations in atomoles per microliter. Many PCR methods have an LOQ of around a CT of 30, which corresponds to 1.79 times 10 to the 3 RNA per microliter and only 3 atomoles per microliter of protein and peptide when detected by LCMS. We initially looked at two SARS-CoV-2 workflow strategies, an unenriched direct analysis of the sample following denaturation and digestion, and an enriched workflow looking at solid phase extraction or antibody cleanup and enrichment. As time was critical in the early stages of the pandemic, both approaches were investigated since the direct and SPE enrichment methodologies could be initiated immediately. We continue to evaluate several affinity cleanup strategies, including antibody capture. There are several pros and cons associated with each strategy, with the direct approach providing a broad range of markers to work with, with immediate availability of reagents and materials, whereas an enrichment strategy using antibody capture, for example, provides a much cleaner background with higher analytical sensitivity. This also allows the adoption of a shorter LC runtime as a result of reduced interferences in the sample. Looking at the literature, a paper published by the COV MS Consortium, which consists of 15 academic labs and industry partners, published data assessing the NCAP and spike proteins to identify 17 SARS-CoV-2 responsive peptide biomarkers across the two proteins. Looking at the stoichiometry, and as previously shown, NCAP is the most abundant viral SARS-CoV-2 protein with an estimated 300 to 1000 copies per viral particle, making it an attractive target for LCMS-based detection compared to other viral proteins. In parallel, a company called SAT, who are the inventors of CIS-Kappa assay technologies, were working on developing a number of antipeptide antibodies for NCAP proteins, including those shown here. From this set of peptides, primarily based on both MRN response and peptide antibody suitability, peptide AYN was found to be one of the best surrogate peptide candidates, but equally important it is not significantly affected to date by known SARS-CoV-2 virus mutations published in the GISED database. The application of LCMS to detect tripsically digested peptides of SARS-CoV-2 proteins has been successfully demonstrated in the literature. The COV MS Consortium published a very comprehensive paper detailing method development activities and showed data based on the direct LC tandem mass spectrometry analysis. Using universal transport medium or UTM samples initially, the graph on the left shows the CT value obtained for each sample plotted against the log2 of the MS response. In this small data set, the limitations of the MS method analytical sensitivity was demonstrated when using UTM due to the high levels of albumin, collagen and other interferences present in the matrix. 
Further studies in a larger sample cohort, shown on the right hand side of the slide, show the comparison of alternative transport mediums, which include e-swab, UTM, viracult and bioware and the analytical sensitivity that could be achieved when analysing these samples. For example, using eSwab as a matrix, which is relatively less complex than UTM, as it is primarily made up of saline, a detection threshold of CT27 could be achieved. But using UTM, only a CT detection threshold of 23 would be expected. The authors conclude that further analytical sensitivity improvements were required through sample cleanup, suggesting solid phase extraction and or affinity enrichment techniques as avenues to explore for further investigation. This led us on to the adoption of the method that provides enrichment of a sample through the use of CISCAPA and forms the basis of the SARS-CoV-2 LCMS kit RUR workflow. The sample preparation is performed using the Andrew Plus pipetting robot. Following sample deactivation, an aliquot of the liquid matrix, such as VTM, is transferred to a 96 well collection plate. In well denaturation of the viral proteins with a rapid gest solution is performed followed by half an hour digestion with trypsin to digest the NCAP proteins. The digestion is quenched, internal standard is added, followed by the addition of a pool of ciscapa beads targeting NCAP peptides, ADE, AYN and MPA. The capture is performed over one hour. Following capture, samples are washed twice, followed by elution for injection onto the LCMS system. Analysis time is two and a half minutes, enabling analysis of 24 samples per hour and a full plate in four hours. The workflow highlights the first to market end-to-end -end solution for the LCMS analysis of SARS-CoV-2 NCAP peptides for clinical research which includes the SARS-CoV-2 LCMS kit RUR, the Andrew Plus pipetting robot for sample preparation, and the Acuity UPLC I-Class FTN with Zivor TQ excess mass spectrometer for detection and quantitation. I now want to highlight components of the solution you may be less familiar with. Firstly, the use of the Andrew Plus pipetting robot with OneLab software automated sample preparation of samples in clinical research. This performs the denaturation, digestion and enrichment protocols in the workflow. It helps perform reproducible and accurate sample preparation using single and multi-channel pipettes with a modular scalable deck. But bear in mind there are no liquid detection capabilities as observed with other liquid handling systems. There is increased walk away time with the use of micro plate grippers to shuttle plates between modules, in addition to a Shaker Plus platform for mixing and Deepwell Magnet Plus for magnetic bead enrichment. However, centrifugation steps are still performed offline and require manual intervention. There is reduced costly errors through traceability, with one lab providing detailed documentation of robot actions and you can input sample IDs with a barcode reader. Faster implementation of methods in the lab are possible as the OneLab library contains a ready-to-use protocol for Waters SARS-CoV-2 LCMS samples, which is an easy-to-use intuitive graphical user interface requiring no programming expertise. It is also a compact benchtop robot with wide and narrow deck layout options. The SARS-CoV-2 LCMS kit RUR contains the LC column in addition to reagents, plates and valves to begin work on analysing SARS-CoV-2 NCAP peptides. I just want to highlight some of the key components of the kit. This includes a calibrator set containing the three peptides at 500 femtomoles per microliter, which is ready for dilution into the matrix of choice. 
For our experimental work, we use VTM as the matrix. There is also an enrichment step containing antibody coupled magnetic beads corresponding to each of the three target peptides, which I have pooled prior to use. Finally, a system suitability test solution contains all three peptides at 100 femtomoles per microliter, which is diluted in solvent prior to use to assess system performance and aid in troubleshooting. This is an example of the data obtained using the SST prior to five analytical runs. Data on retention time, peak area, and percent to RSD or CV of five replicates prior to each run is shown here. The SST was diluted down to one femtomol per microliter for the target peptides in 10% of the trial prior to injection. The idea is that this provides an indication of system performance prior to analysis, ensuring that the system is meeting or exceeding performance expectations based on previous analysis or benchmarks. This solution can be used to troubleshoot methods and help benchmark the system following any preventative maintenance. Now I would like to cover the LCMS conditions associated with the method. The LC separation was performed on the Acuity UPLC R-Class system using the Acuity Premier Peptide BEHC18 column. The column is only 3 cm long which allows for rapid separation and equilibration times. The mobile phases are water and acetonitrile with 0.1% formic acid, which is fairly standard for peptide separations. The column temperature is 40 degrees, and 20 microliters of the extracted sample is injected onto a step-based gradient with separation over a runtime of 1.8 minutes with a 2.5 minute cycle time. Tandem mass spectrometry is performed on our high-end Zivor platform, the Zivor TQXS. Detection is in positive electrospray ionisation at a capillary voltage of 0.5 kV and desolvation temperature of 600 degrees Celsius. The MS was set up in unit mass resolution and detection of the peptides was performed using multiple reaction monitoring or MRM with a quantifier, two qualifiers, and one internal standard transition for each of the peptides ADE, AYN, and MPA. Now I can move on to some of the results obtained using the SARS-CoV-2 LCMS kit. The analytical sensitivity, or the LRQ, was determined following the FDA Bioanalytical Method Validation Guidelines by analysing the three peptides at the following concentrations 2, 3, 5, 10 and 20 atomoles per microliter in viral transport medium. Each concentration level was analysed in replicates of five over three runs. The LOQ was determined to be three atomoles per microliter where the precision performance was less than or equal to 17.2% CV and bias was within 19.8% across all three peptides. ADE was shown to provide the highest peak intensity, closely followed by AYN and MPA when examining peptide spike samples. Peptide calibration curves were prepared over the range of 3 to 50,000 atomoles per microliter in viral transport medium and analysed over five days. All calibration curves were linear, from 3 to 50,000 atomoles per microliter, providing over four orders of magnitude of linear dynamic range for all three peptides. All correlation coefficients were greater than 0.99 on all occasions, and 75% of at least six non-zero calibrators were within 15% of their nominal concentrations except for the LOQ, which was within 20%. Precision of peptide spiked QC samples was also examined, with in-house QCs prepared in peptide spiked VTM at 3, 10, 425,000 atomoles per microliter for ADE, AYN and MPA. 
Precision was performed over five separate occasions using five kits with five replicates at each concentration. Interday and intraday precision was less than 17.4% CV at 3 atomoles per microliter and less than or equal to 12.4% CV when looking at samples from 10 to 25,000 atomoles per microliter. A similar precision experiment was performed using the nuclear capsid protein spiked into VTM at 3, 10, 400 and 25,000 atomoles per microliter. Again, precision was performed over five separate occasions using five kits with five replicates at each concentration. Interday and intraday precision was less than 18.8% CV from 3 to 25,000 atomoles per microliter with greater variability observed on the NCAP interday precision, possibly in relation to variations in the digestion efficiency day to day. I would now like to show you some of the additional performance characteristics that might be relevant to research studies. Matrix effects of the method were evaluated in phosphate buffered saline, two types of VTM, and compared to a solvent spike sample. The matrix effects range from 94 to 97% for ADE, 102 to 107% for AYN, and 103 to 100% for MPA across the matrices evaluated. This emphasises the cleanliness of the extraction protocol using an enrichment approach, opening the door for investigation of other sample types. No significant carryover was noted in blank samples following injection of a sample at 50,000 atomoles per microliter. This confirms that samples that cover a large dynamic range can be analysed in the same run without worrying about erroneous results from carryover. Extracted samples were also shown to be stable and stored in the auto sampler for 48 hours. This means there is sufficient sample for re-injection for additional investigations. So in summary, the SARS-CoV-2 LTMS kit RUO can be used to directly detect and quantify SARS-CoV-2 NCAP peptides for clinical research. The method does not replicate target analytes, therefore we can reduce the effects of contamination and erroneous results. The SARS-CoV-2 LTMS kit RUO provides excellent analytical sensitivity down to 3 atomoles per microliter with reproducible data across five occasions using different kits. And finally, we believe LCMSMS can be used as a complementary approach to PCR for research, with the added benefit of using the multi analyte detection capabilities of LCMSMS to also monitor biomarkers as part of SARS CoV 2 longitudinal research studies. And that is the end of the presentation today. So there are a huge number of people to thank from the beginning of this journey. They include partners across public and private sectors, as well as a large number of Waters colleagues shown in the slide here. So there are far too many to mention individually. But they have all contributed in making the SARS-CoV-2 LCMS kit RUR a reality. And they deserve a huge thanks for their efforts. So thank you. Thanks for your attention today, and if you have any questions on this exciting new kit, please feel free to ask them now, or you may contact your local Waters representative for any further information.